Coming up in this FinCast, no one had ever bred this deep water Anthias in captivity. Then one day, the lights went out, and well, here we are. And all of a sudden, it was like, you know, we're away with a, a pretty special fish. The amazing backstory from the man who did it. So, so definitely, when I put Kimmy Pure in the system, I saw uh, a greater water clarity. For, for sure, definitely the water got, uh, got very, very crystal clear. Hi everybody, John here with another FinCast. Today I have for you the amazing backstory of the Borbonius or blotched Antheus uh, and the breeding that took place that wasn't anticipated. It happened years in advance of when the man who collected the fish thought the breeding might happen. This fish, as of this recording, costs $500 online, and they've actually been selling. But let's get to that backstory. This is from a company called Biota, which is raising fish, corals, and vertebrates like clams on the island of Palau in the Pacific Ocean. Tom Bowling told me how the breeding of this fish started as a trip with the California Academy of Sciences. I have a dive boat, so I agreed to take them out diving for the, the deep water collections that they do as a survey. Uh, and I also set up a cold room, as in cool room, so about 24 degrees Celsius with an air conditioner just to replicate the, the deeper water. So these guys, their parents, the broodstock, were collected at about 100 and, well, over 100 meters, so 350 feet, something like that, like very deep, yeah. So it's not, not the normal place you would go, and that seems to be where they settle. Um, I guess, you know, um, from a life uh, strategy that's obviously their range and, and I think that they might have better vision uh, for, for being at that depth, they sort of have the big pronounced eyes. Tom didn't expect to have this success right away. His fish were very young. And we, we got all their fish, kept them, and then they, as a return, we, they, um, they gave us six Warbonius for, for broodstock. They were all sort of sub-adults, quite small. So I figured it was going to be a year or maybe two years until we got spawning. I, I didn't, wasn't really sure. I, I haven't done Antheus before at all, so I, I really had no idea. Uh, I just knew that they ate a lot and they were growing pretty fast. So we fed them, you know, four or five times a day, um, a lot of food. And uh, yeah, basically they fattened up. One of them got really big and the behavior was there. They were definitely courting and, and we, you know, we could see that, that they were going to breed. But um, and I, I did have plans to raise the temperature to, to trial that later. Well, well, actually, I planned to do it after Magna when I thought they'd be big enough. Raising the temperature often triggers breeding behavior, but Tom thought it was still too soon. However, then there was a power outage and they lost the air conditioning in the building. And that's when the magic happened. Uh, and it just so happens that the AC unit broke down and the temperature spiked and yeah we had eggs and all of a sudden it was like you know we're away with a, a pretty special fish not only is the fish unique but it's pretty and it plays well with others and it takes readily to prepared foods apart from being expensive because they're, they're they're rare to get or anything they're actually just unique in their, their behavioral traits because they've got a really good community behavior they're, they're a little bit aggressive so they they hold their own place in the tank but they don't really attack or engage in combat, as it were. So, so they, yeah, they're, they're a good community fish, I think. They're really pretty, so. As pretty as these specimens are, they'll only get prettier as they age. It's, it's kind of funny, actually. I, I shipped them out here only three weeks ago, um, and they were only, they don't, they're only, uh, what are they, 10 weeks old. So they're two and a half months old. And when I shipped them, they had no color. They just had the blotch patterns, and they had no extensions on the rays. They were just kind of normal fins, except they had very long ventrals and they got to uh, the facility in Fort Lauderdale and then they just got fed. You know, we ran them full of protein basically and luckily they came good for us for the show, but I still think that they've got a lot more color to put on. If you look at the adults, they're much more colorful. These guys, are, they're already halfway there, but they, they've got more, more to come. It's, 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 a, yeah, it's, it's a blend of pink and, and yellows. It's yeah, just like the adults. I never really had one in an aquarium, uh, like in a display tank. We had them in our grow out fish tanks, but yeah, it was really, awesome to come here and just see it on show and it's, it's one of our products so yeah it's very exciting 
So that's the backstory on this fish. And again, I think the price will probably come down as they get more and more of these specimens available. And I'll put a link to Biota with the description of this video. But isn't that an interesting story? By the way, this is 2017, and I did my interview with Tom at MACNA in New Orleans 2017. So that will give you a, a reference if you're watching this at, uh, at some time in the future. And hopefully when you go to their website, maybe a year from now, we'll be able to see that fish uh, at a more reasonable rate. But I, I expect that they will stay uh, on the expensive side compared to regular fish. All right, so that's all for this FinCast. I appreciate you watching. Please hit the subscribe button. It helps my channel out a lot, and uh, I do appreciate the support. Please click around. There's lots of stories on uh, other marine topics. I'll be setting up a 180-gallon tank. That series is coming up. And also, uh, if you also like freshwater fish or planted aquaria, I've got plenty of FinCasts on that as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next FinCast.